Hello everybody, uh, Richard Tromans at Artificial Lawyer TV again. Um, today we're going to be doing a product walkthrough of a new legal research system called Legal Edison, uh, based out of Toronto, Canada. Um, with us is the CEO and founder of the company, uh, Aniket Bart. Hi Aniket. Hi Richard, thanks for having me. Oh, pleasure. So very briefly, what is Legal Edison? Sure. So the initial foundations of Legal Edison came in my first year of law school. Uh, and I was trying to figure out uh, a way to read my, my readings faster, basically. And uh, I kind of came up with a really simple Python script to take the most important paragraphs of a case law of a case and return them to you. And out of that came out Legal Edison. And it's become a little bit more sophisticated now. And so what it does is it takes a case and summarizes for you automatically and returns some key insights. Uh, and we've been talking to a couple of law firms recently and it seems to have a useful application in a practical sense or a practicing sense. Okay, fantastic. And, and what stage are you at now? Where, whereabouts are you in the development uh, journey? It's a great question. Uh, so we're currently in beta testing. Okay. So uh, we're working with some law firms to work out some kinks uh, that are you know, some few uh, minor adjustments we need to make. So that's at the process we're at right now. Stay okay, safe. excellent, excellent. All right, well, well, I'll ask you a few more questions about that um, after the demo, but uh, let, let's have a little walkthrough and, and uh, please tell us how it works. Sure, absolutely. So like I said, uh, a fun little anecdote I have is for the, the movie The Paper Chase. And uh, when I was going into law school my first year, everyone told me, you need to watch this movie. This is what law school is like. And uh, the movie talks about the readings that law students have to go through. And there's so much reading you have to do. And in such a little time, a lot of times it's unrealistic. And I was trying to figure out a way to, you know, how can I do all this reading with assistance of technology? And that's kind of where Legal Edison came in. So I wrote some basic code to automatically summarize my readings. And now that we've, you know, looked at the code and it's gone a little bit more sophisticated, we can do a few more things with it. Uh, so essentially how it works, uh, since we're based in Toronto, Ontario, uh, in Canada, we have our legal database, which is free and open source. It's called Canly. Uh, so once a user or legal professional, professional or law student finds a case that they need to summarize, they have uh, one of two options. They can either uh, put in the case law URL into our system or alternatively, if, uh, if they're using another system, for example, Westlaw or Quick Law or um, even Case Text uh, or any other version of a research platform, they can copy and paste the entire case and input it into our platform. And uh, once they hit summarize the case, which takes no longer than 30 seconds on average, usually much less than that, uh, a summary is returned to you. And so the summary has a few essential uh, components to it. Uh, there's obviously the citation. Um, and we found the citation to be extremely helpful, particularly for law students, because uh, in law school, uh, you have to create a citation. And uh, a lot of school, law schools have this infamous you know, legal research class where people lose GPA points over uh, citations, whatever. And it's a tedious process for legal professionals, too. Uh, that's one aspect of it. Uh, additionally, uh, there's a feature called the case skeleton, which is a really quick and dirty way of figuring out what the case is about. Uh, it's almost as if I told someone to summarize the case in 10 sentences, uh, who's involved and what are they doing and the outcome of it. So that's what the case skeleton does. You can read that through uh, in three minutes and figure out, okay, this is what the case is about. This is the outcome. This is the an analysis. Uh, additionally, you can read the full case as well, uh, just to compare. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, you are met with some key insights. So who is involved in the case? Uh, what are the parties? What are the keywords? And if there are any legal tests or legal concepts involved, you can quickly find out uh, what those are. Uh, but the, 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 the main aspect, the real meat and bones of the project of the code is the summary in the middle. Uh, the summary uh, on average is about 100 sentences and it goes into the most important uh, aspects of the case and what really matters. 
Um, so it comes up with the introduction, what are the facts, the analysis, the important parts, and the conclusion, uh, much like you would do a case brief, uh, although it goes into a little bit more detail, we found. Um, so additionally, the user can edit the summary or highlight or whatever according to their needs. Uh, for example, here I have highlighted a sentence and uh, said this is the version one. Uh, and I'm able to now download the summary and share internally within my firm or externally by email. Uh, what we've discovered uh, for this uh, platform is that there have been a couple of unique uh, use cases that have come up, uh, mainly, uh, like I've mentioned, for legal research purposes. Uh, if you're met with a bunch of cases you need to go through and figure out whether they're relevant, you can quickly poke them into our system and get a summary of them. Uh, another unique use case I hadn't thought of before was, uh, I know I've been working with one law firm that's been using it for legal bulletins and blog posts and marketing. So if there's a new uh, case that's come out in their field, uh, they can quickly summarize it in their platform and post it on their blog. Uh, so that's basically how the platform works. And so we're, in currently, we're currently in beta testing and uh, we're working on some kinks. Fantastic. It's very interesting. And you, you said um, before that you were working using just Python as the Correct, main software. Yes. So, I mean, this is, I presume, using some type of natural language processing to get into that unstructured data. But that's all running through Python. Correct. Yes. Yeah. It's all, it's a pure Python script. Okay. And was, was this something that you kind of took off the shelf in terms of the, the natural language processing or have you been training it up yourself? Right, so the way it works is uh, I was able to look at human made case laws, uh, sorry, case law summaries, uh, memos, uh, things of that nature, and figure out all right, now I have, now that I have these human made versions, what are the words, phrases, terms that are uh, popping up frequently? And uh, since these are popping frequently, uh, when we're trying to summarize case law, which paragraphs are heavy in those terms? And the heavier they are in those terms, the higher they're rated and returned uh, in the summary. Gotcha. So you're doing this, you're, you're basically doing the NLP, pulling out key terms, and then doing a statistical model to then highlight and push those up into the summary. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's a gotcha. great way of summarizing it. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's what I do. That's what my brain does. But my brain is, is like a, a miniature version of legal Edison. <laughs> exactly perfect <laughs> but um okay gotcha that makes a lot of sense and i mean the and the, the case law that you're you're drawing from i mean i suppose you're using canadian the canadian system because it's free access but i mean with the right licenses and so forth you could use this on anything yeah that's, that's what's so great about uh the code is it's so scalable um without requiring to modify a lot of the code uh, it can work with most common law jurisdictions. And so I actually talked to a couple of Australian law students who found the product to be extremely useful just by copying and pasting their uh, case law into the, the function and the platform. So definitely there's some scalability uh, globally, absolutely, in common law jurisdictions. Interesting. And how long did it take you to get it to a point where you felt that it was accurate enough you'd actually want to slide this under the noses of a bunch of actual practicing lawyers. I mean, to get to, because obviously you don't want glaring mistakes in the middle of it. So you have to get to that point of at least 99%. I mean, how, how long did it take you to get to that? Absolutely. So I think uh, my first version came out for myself, uh, which I started using uh, maybe five or six months ago. And so, uh, it's been it's been a lot of you know that fine tuning and you know figuring out new ways of uh, summarizing case, which I'm still doing. Uh, trying to figure out, all right, now that I have this, how can I make this better, and what do I need to change? And if necessary, uh, we can totally rewrite this to make this better. Um, so it's been about five to six months. But uh, you know what's funny is even my first uh, product that I created uh, for internally just to use for myself was far better than having to read the entire case. Uh, so I think even any uh, minor uh, adjustment is, is tremendous. And how does this, and you may not have looked, but I mean, you, and you may have, uh, how does this compare to some of the other tools that are out there in the markets? Um, I, I mean, 
it seems like such a good idea. I imagine that others have perhaps tried this or, or not. I don't know. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So I've spent some time researching, uh, you know, who else is in the market doing this uh, purely for selfish reasons to figure out, all right, how do I get my readings done faster? And I, I was unable to, to find anything as comprehensive as this. There are some startups that do summarizations of, uh, you know, for example, news articles or uh, Wikipedia entries, but nothing specific to the legal industry or case law. Um, and so, for example, in, in Westlaw or LexisNexis Quick Law, you have these little head notes that, you know, provide maybe a, a paragraph of what the case is about, but I don't find that to be enough detail to confidently walk into uh, a discussion about the case with. Interesting. And, and I, I thought your point about law firms using this uh, for marketing purposes so that they can very quickly summarize new legislation or a new sort of important case that's just gone through the courts and just bang it up on the website uh, for the attention of their uh, their clients. So I can see that being very applicable as well. So what, so what happens next? Um, but where do you see so this is working? What, where do you take this? Uh, that's a golden question, I think. Uh, so uh, right, really right now, what we are, uh, what we're doing is we're really product driven, uh, trying to figure out, uh, all right, we're at this percentage of accuracy, how do we get to the next stage of accuracy in, in, the, in the software? So we're, we're currently working with uh, three law firms uh, locally. Uh, we just, uh, just talked to another law firm yesterday uh, who was very enthusiastic about the product. Um, so we're trying to figure out, you know, what features are useful to law firms uh, and if the features are great, how can we improve them? Uh, I think once we're at a stage uh, where we're really comfortable with the product, we can, you know, expand and, and go into further in Canada and hopefully in other common law jurisdictions. Yeah, well, I, mean, I mean, I imagine you can use this anywhere. Like, obviously, the US is the biggest legal market. The problem, of course, uh, once you leave that lovely free source of, of legal data, you start right. to run up against... Um, well, let's, let's call it um, ownership issues. Um, <laughs> who, who owns the law? Um, which is, but that's a thorny subject, which we can come back to another day. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I think that's fascinating. Thank you very much. Um, be very interested to see um, how you get on. Um, and um, I'll put a couple of notes at the end of this so that people can come and check it out if they'd like to. All right, thank you very much, Hanika. Oh, thanks, Richard. Thanks for having me.